we now turn to the presidential race. New polls now have revealed that Donald Trump is closing the gap in battleground states. He's now tied with Hillary Clinton in Florida and leads by one point in the state of Ohio. Just last month, Clinton was ahead in Ohio as she led by five points as well in Pennsylvania, down from 10 points again in August. She's also up four in North Carolina. This all comes as Clinton gains the support, though, of more military members. 15 more generals and admirals have announced today that they will be endorsing the Democratic nominee. And to discuss uh, the impact of that, perhaps, I'm joined by a most dynamic of duos, the co-authors of the Politico playbook, Jake Sherman and Anna Palmer in Washington. And uh, again, uh, guys, as I mentioned, Clinton has the support now of uh, many military leaders. She's uh, added 15 more there, as well as dozens of prominent Republicans. But a recent poll does show that current military members and veterans actually prefer Donald Trump. So where do you see this uh, divide coming from? I don't think that the random military members that keep supporting her uh, make that much of a difference. Um, I think a lot of this is the brass of the military, and I think a lot of there's a lot of people who are outside of the brass right. who support Donald Trump. And on the, po the the point of the polls, I think what Anna and I take away from this is so those polls are kind of snapping it back to their natural tendencies, right? So. Uh, Yes, the race is tightening. We expected it to tighten. But what we're not saying and what we should be talking about is Donald Trump needs to win all of those states to win the White House. He doesn't need to win one of them. He needs to sweep all four of them. Well, and I would say, I think as far as the brass goes, I mean, you look at there's a big divide here right now that's happening about whether or not the military should be weighing in as aggressively as, as they are right now. This is unprecedented in any other political uh, race. They have never done this before. And I think there's a big divide in terms of whether the leaders in the military should be doing this or not. And as I agree completely with what you're saying, we've talked about this a lot in the mornings, is in terms of what's happening in the states. I mean, he's doing better. That bump out of the convention seems to be dropping, but he's going to have to do even better to actually pull this off. Uh, meanwhile, and perhaps because national security, especially for the last 72 hours or so in a news cycle that is unrelenting, has really found the crosshairs now. Hillary Clinton will be meeting with national security leaders this afternoon here in New York to discuss plans for fighting terrorism. Uh, obviously, uh, Donald Trump's rather secret plan to defeat ISIS has also been in the purview of late. So with regard to the meeting today that the secretary is going to have with these leaders, what do you expect to come from it? I mean, I think it's going to be more of the same, right? You're going to see her kind of try to have this posture of I'm the person who want, you want to have have that 3 a.m. call, right? I mean, I don't think you're going to see any big prescriptions of policy that she already hasn't laid out. But I think this is her trying to lay out that I am the serious candidate in this race. And I think this dovetails nicely with uh, Donald Trump's unlikely alliance uh, with Vladimir Putin, Putin, who he's been praising all week. And... Hillary Clinton's message was, isn't really like, here's a new policy prescription, here's what I sh I'm going to do differently than Barack Obama. It's Donald Trump is simply unfit to uh, be in the White House. Right. And, uh, as she wants to hammer that in as often as, as she can in the next two months. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's a powerful message when you're basically embracing a guy and citing his poll numbers who uh, uh, murders his uh, uh, opponents, who has a, a very strong grip on a free press, and who's largely seen throughout the world as defying kind of uh, uh, government and social norms. It was uh, something, in fact, yesterday that uh, Trump's running mate, Governor Mike Pence, actually reiterated, saying that it is in <coughs> arguable that Vladimir Putin has been a better leader for Russia than Barack Obama has been for this country, uh, really thrusting himself into the debate as well. And he will do so again today, albeit on a different front. He is set to, as the Indiana governor, set to release his tax, re his tax returns uh, today, uh, leaving his running mate in his wake in that regard. What sort of pressure will this place on Donald Trump? I actually, I don't Zero. Think, yeah, I don't okay. think it play, places any pressure. I think if you actually look at that, this is them saying, listen, there's nothing here to see here. I've been a public official for a very long time. I don't think you're going to see Donald Trump cave on the tax issue uh, and, and revealing that in the next couple months. But but as you're showing on the screen, like Donald Trump, uh, the public does want Donald Trump to release his tax returns. But uh, 
listen, if I'm Donald Trump, I understand the political position that he's in. He's tight in all these states. It's unlikely to me that there's any true political upside in, <laughs> in releasing his tax returns because I think it's it's commonly held that he's paying an extremely low, if not close to zero rate but, uh, and, in his tax. And, but Jake, to, to that point, isn't it also a question of when the tax returns are released, especially with uh, the uh, cozying up to Vladimir Putin and by extension Russia, tax returns reveal who uh, someone and who the, their companies may have done business with. And that seems to be as big a question here as anything. Yeah, I don't, but I would say, I would just want to jump in here. I don't know that it's going to be, he's doing a bunch of business with Putin. I actually think he's done a lot of business in the Middle East and with other people. And more than anything, there's a concern that he is somebody who has said he's the most, you know, uh, fabulously wealthy and successful businessman, and his taxes could actually show that he's not as wealthy as he's saying he is. Uh, very quickly, guys, a big piece of news today as well. A co-founder of Facebook, perhaps you've heard of it, a, a, niche, a niche company, Dustin Moskovitz, <laughs> is now going to be donating $20 million in a general effort to defeat Donald Trump. The money is uh, said to be going to about a half dozen different Democratic groups. How do you think uh, voters will respond uh, to the politicizing of, uh, let's be honest, the politicizing of, of, uh, of, of a place of meeting for millions and millions of them? I think that uh, he's a rich guy who's going to give his money where he wants. I don't think this has a lot of impact on Facebook. But listen, I, I, the real question that Anna and I were talking about before we came on the air is, is this the beginning of more Silicon Valley people getting off the sideline and sidelines and going against Donald Trump? Uh, this could presage something larger as we are now less than two months from Election Day. Uh, this could be the start of another drumbeat of money against Donald Trump. Anna, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think really if you look at this, what is going to be very interesting to see is you have two months. There's the, they need to get the money in now in terms mm -hmm. of actually trying to get ad time. In and terms have of, impact, Have right? impact, yeah. right? And so I think what will be interesting to see is, is he the first of many or is, he the, his, is this just his kind of planting his flag? And I will say this, you better believe that every single Democratic uh, candidate in California and everywhere else in the next two cycles will be going to this guy because he clearly has the ability to write big checks. Yeah, those checks, those checks have a lot of zeros indeed. Anna Palmer, Jake Sherman, co-authors of Politico Playbook, as always. We appreciate the insight. Thanks, Josh.